Hey guys, welcome. Good evening. How are all of you doing? Welcome to the rapid exam prep series for class nine. Uh, so welcome again. And as you guys already know by now that what we do in these sessions, we revise chapters in a brisk and then we see the types of questions that are important from an examination point of view, right? So let's not waste our time uh, today and uh, straight away get into the chapter and the today's uh, chapter is improvement in food resources right so what all we need to understand this chapter um, i have already discussed this in class, past classes so i'm not going to repeat that uh, in detail just you know that 30 percent 30 marks sorry comes from biology portion right now food resource so basically you must be able to uh, understand what's a, what's a food resource some uh, it's anything that helps you fulfill your requirement of energy right so food resource can be from plant or animal right now generally when we when we say plants we are talking about crops but you should understand by now that uh, when we say plants several algae are also included in that right and we also consume certain fungi though they are not plants but they also come under food resource. So now in this world, food resource is much more than uh, what we talk about. So uh, why are we talking about? Because we are we have a shortage, we have uh, more population to feed. So we talk about ways to make this more efficient, right? That means to improve the yield, because if we are uh, able to produce more on the same land, we are able to work out the problem because anytime soon land is not gonna increase, right? So we have to increase the yield of the land. So how do we do that? So there are several ways. First is variety improvement. So uh, variety improvement generally comes by hybridization or genetic engineering. Now it's hybridization. You cross the local breeds, local varieties with the varieties from the wild or from other foreign uh, places, which are superior, right? So which are superior and that gives you a, a good variety, a variety which is resistant to diseases, which might be more nutritionally equipped, right? So that is the, our strategy in yield uh, in hybridize, uh, from hybrid, hybridization when it comes to variety improvement. Now about genetic engineering, we do the same process by use, but by using the uh, tools of genetics, right? So we select genes and incorporate them in our plants so that our plants are uh, become more capable right uh, when you go in higher standards you learn more about these but by now you should be able to understand what's hybridization hybridization and what's genetic engineering right then so this was by improving uh, variety that means you make the plant that you already have a better version of itself right next you talk about production improvement that means what you're doing on field right so how you're carrying out the crop actual cropping can the process be improved in order to achieve a better yield? So yes, how do we do that? By nutrient management. So what's nutrient management? Every crop we know has, has a certain uh, profile, right? Every crop has a certain profile uh, of nutrients that it, it wants to take. So we make sure that the soil is used efficiently. Hybridization, uh, Abdullah, is a process where we, uh, we take two varieties okay and cross them together to produce a hybrid a hybrid that will supposedly have the best features of both okay so what we are doing we are taking two crop varieties which have the desirable traits and we try to cross them and produce a breed that has the qualities both the qualities that we want okay uh money it's a good question hybridization basically depends on nature okay so we expect the varieties to have those genes and we expect that that particular gene that we are interested in shows up in the breed for example let's say you want tall plants and you also want plants which are resistant you're crossing the two varieties you are hoping that the plant the hybrid will be t and r will will be both tall and will be both resistant this is not always the case it might and it might not Whereas in genetic engineering, you screen the genes, you screen the genes out, you insert it in the plant itself, 
uh, due, in the early stages of growth so that the plant will express those genes. So genetic engineering is more sure shot method, whereas hybridization is more nature dependent. It might happen, it might not. Okay. Okay, coming back, nutrient management, we use manures and fertilizers to supply the need of the plant. Okay, so we augment the nutrient nutrition that is already present there, or we can also crop in a manner that manages the nutrient uh, utilization well. So the two options are mixed cropping and intercropping. Now, a very famous question is the difference between the two. You're very often asked in exams, what is the difference between mixed cropping and intercropping? So mixed cropping is when you grow two crops, but not in any defined fashion. You're just growing two or more than two crops on the same field. Go ahead, Tripti, ask the question that you want to. Whereas intercropping is a predefined, well-planned method. You grow them in separate rows. Now, this has got several advantages. Uh, first advantage is because different uh, crops have different needs. Uh, uh, Mane, I will answer that in a moment. Uh, so different crops have different needs, so they will uh, use the soil differently. Okay, so different nutrients will be uh, utilized at a different rate. At the end, we won't have the soil deficient in any one particular nutrient, right? So that will be the out effect. Further, it has certain uh, other benefits as well. Okay, now which method is beneficial as Mane has asked? Well, they both have their own needs, but certainly in intercropping is more uh, managed, right? It's more managed for the producer because you, you can easily harvest, you can easily do things that makes your process more efficient. So I view intercropping as a, be as a better method, right? What is genetic manipulation? Uh, okay, Ma uh, who is Abhishek? Uh, Abhishek, genetic manip uh, manipulation basically involves manipulating the genes. Okay, that's the job of a genetic engineer. And uh, you don't, uh, it's way beyond your scope right now. That is why I'm not going into deep. Okay, okay. Then we come to irrigation practices. So we adopt the best irrigation practices that, uh, that improves our uh, production of the plant, right? So you have drip irrigation, you have uh, uh, such irrigation practices, right? So drip, by drip irrigation, we, we give the water directly to the roots. Okay, so that is uh, the advantage. It, it consumes less water and produces more efficiently. Crop rotation is another cropping pattern where what you do is in a pre-planned fashion, you grow crops alternatively on the same piece of land. So maybe this year you are planning to grow crop A, next year you uh, you'll, you are going to uh, uh, grow crop B, right? And because they will have different nutritional requirements, they will not deplete the soil in one particular nutrient. Okay, so that's crop rotation. Uh, Sangeeta, believe me, this is not a platform where you'd like to write. Just try to grasp uh, what we can do to make it better. Because don't write definitions right out of this lecture. Because here we are not discussing things in detail, right? So we are just giving you an overview. Don't uh, uh, try to grasp a definition per se from this lecture. It won't help you in long run, okay? A uh, fertilizers mane are indeed very helpful, but their overdoses can have huge losses, huge impacts, even for the plant and even for the ecosystems, right? Further, they are chemically synthesized, so they have to be administered very carefully. One thing that I missed talking about other types of food uh, crops that are kharif and rabi. Now, this is not a big thing to understand. It's just something that you remember. So I have written here that uh, kharif is June to October. It, uh, example is paddy and soya, number April, wheat and gram. Oh, uh, sorry, Swami, I forgot that. So uh, this is something that you need to remember. Nothing much to understand. Both are helpful, obviously, this tree, but we would prefer using manure than fertilizers. We use fertilizers, money because it's a quick uh, method. Manures will take time to show an effect and fertilizers are quick. It's like you have a fever, you take a medicine, it will show a quick effect. But if you try to work out your immunity, it will take time, right? Because a uh, manure takes time, uh, Mane. I hope that, uh, uh, yes, Tripti, please go ahead and ask your questions. Uh, then we come to the animal husbandry, uh, where we will be talking about the food uh, 
with the uh, animals that we use as food, right? So we have cattle, poultry, uh, pisciculture, and apiculture. So what's cattle? It's basically uh, it involves cows, and we know why do we use cows, right? Oh, sorry, I, I forgot again. Sorry, uh, Vineet. So uh, we know we we use cows main, mainly for the dairy products, right? Milk and milk related products. So here, what you need to rem remember, apart from the general understanding of cattle farming, is the difference between the exotic and the local breeds. Now, local breeds, as I've written, uh, reds, uh, sorry, uh, reds, uh, reds, Sindhi and Sahiwal, they are uh, very, uh, you know, disease resistant, right? And then you have the exotic breeds like Jersey and Brown Swiss. They are generally, uh, what do you call? They generally have a good lactation period. They they um, they give uh, they milk for a better time, right? So we we cross them to have hybrids, right? Now if because we are focusing here on milk and milk is a protein product, we look for protein majorly there. So we make sure the feed that we are giving to cattle is having a protein rich diet, right? Secondly, uh, we uh, uh, money. I will take that question at the end right now. Okay. So, and we also should also make sure that they do, they are away from the diseases, right? Now, coming to poultry, poultry is generally when we talk about chicken, right? So again, here we have certain breeds like a seal and leghorn. A seal is a local, whereas leghorn is, a, uh, is an exotic breed. We produce hybrid varieties here as well so that we have a better yield, right? You should understand the um, difference between layers and boilers right uh Ma maria go ahead uh you don't need my permission you can ask a question whenever you want i uh, because of the constraint of the time that we have i will try to uh, answer the ones that i can take okay okay so uh that's uh poultry farming then we come about the pc culture pc culture basically means uh, the farming of the fish right so uh there we have ddt and bhc are pesticides Okay. Okay. So pisciculture is basically a uh, farming of fishes. We do that in freshwater. That's called inland, and we do that in marine as well. That's called marine pisciculture. Now, one thing that's of very importance. Two questions actually. That's very important uh, in the pisciculture is the difference between inland and marine farming. Okay. So that frequently comes in exams as a two marker or sometimes one marker, right? So make sure that you know that. Second thing is, um, what is composite culture? Okay, so composite culture is basically where we use more than one type of, of fishes, more than one breed of fishes, which differ in their feeding patterns. Like we can use cutla, which is a surface feeder. We can use rohu, which is a middle feeder. And we can use mrigal, which is a bottom feeder, right? So because because they, are diff they have different kind of feeding patterns, those will not compete against themselves okay for food so that we have better chances we have better luck of uh having a good culture of fishes outside sometimes also you you must have read in your ncrt that fishes are grown along with paddy because paddy needs much of water so the land can be used in dual math method right believe me shashank you don't need that NCRT doesn't require you to know too many examples. DDT is something that uh, that will do well for now. Okay, you have uh, several others as well, but you don't need them right now. Ritesh, I have written here, a red Sindhi is a local breed and Jersey and uh, Brown Swiss are foreign breeds. Arya, see, that is what we are talking about. Whenever I'm talking each, each uh, category i'm giving you a question that is important from examination point of view right lastly we come to ap apiculture apiculture is that of honey right we, we uh, farm bees honey bees and we take uh, honey out of them right they're not grown in paddy imane we grow them in a, we grow them in an area where paddy can also be grown okay now, uh, the apiculture uh, generally utilizes two breeds, that is uh, Apis serana indica, which is the local Indian breed. But because we want higher yields, we also use A mellifera, that is Apis mellifera, because it, it is known to have a better uh, feature, right? 
Okay, so that is all that we need to cover in this chapter. But again, this is a very brief overview. This is not a complete thing. Okay, brackish water amane is generally a place which is uh, which is very waterlogged, and it's it generally uh, has salty water content or very muddy water content. It's not ideal for crops generally because of the low oxygen content there. Okay. Now, what are the important topics uh, that we need to study in this chapter? Deter uh, determinants of a good variety. So this question might be directly or indirectly. Uh, ta Tashvi hormonal simulation. The problem is Tashvi that whenever we, we uh, have composite culture of fishes, they don't always have a good mating period. For example, they might mate only in monsoon, right? But we don't want that to happen. Right, we don't want them to mate only one season because that decreases the efficiency of our farming method. So we provide them with uh, hormones. Uh, I think it's it's it should be estrogen because that stimulates them to produce more eggs. Right. So hormonal stimulation basically makes them receptive towards reproduction. So they will go ahead and reproduce and make more baby fishes that we can use. Right. So that is what the use of hormonal stimulation. Okay, coming back, uh, so differences between crop rotation, mixed cropping, and intercropping. People generally confused here between mixed cropping and intercropping. Make sure you don't do that. Okay, then selection of breeds and varieties for various animal husbandry practices. So you should remember what is the advantage of a breed. For example, if I'm talking about uh, the red Sindhi and the Jersey and red Sindhi. So you should know that red Sindhi is, uh, you know, resistant towards diseases and jersey has a good lactation period so if if you are asked a question and if you're not mentioning this then what is the what is the advantage of using red sindhi or brown swiss you won't be awarded full marks right so make sure that that you you complete your answers you justify your answers nutrient uh math leaps uh, is anything that uh, provides you the matter or the energy that an organism needs Right? It may be an energy product full of carbohydrates. It may be a proteinaceous product that can give you growth. Okay. Now, uh, next we will be talking about uh, a practical based question that can be asked in your exams because they do have certain weightage for that. So that is adulteration of dal with methanol yellow. Now, generally they are certain preservatives, but methanol yellow is generally used to provide color to dal. dal. Okay, which is which is not at all approved by the government because it's harmful. It is a potent carcinogen. So how to detect it? We detect it by using HCl, which turns it pink in color. So you should be able to uh, outline the process. Uh, I will try. If I'm left with time, Mane, I will try to uh, explain it again. Now let's try and discuss certain uh, theory questions that come often in exams. So differentiate between intercropping and mixed cropping. So the main difference is that mixed cropping does not has a fixed patterns of things. So it may be haphazard, whereas intercropping has predefined patterns, right? So we grow them in alternate uh, rows. Why bee, uh, beekeeping should be done in good, good pastures? Now, as we know and understand that <clears throat> all of our processes, be it poultry, be it cattle farming, all of our process de depends on what quality of animal we are using. For example, if you're using a uh, chicken uh, for laying egg, and if they don't have good vitamins, then they won't be able to serve as a good food, right? So similarly, in beekeeping as well, if you don't provide them good pastures, they won't be able to produce good honey. And hence, defeating the purpose of uh, improvement in food resources. Yes? So quality of honey depends. That's great, Tashvi. That's correct. What is the role of hybridization in plant variety humor? So I'm taking this opportunity to explain the difference between hybridization and plant variety. Okay, so guys, uh, try to focus and understand this one. So let's say, uh, as I was giving an example, let's say I want a plant which is tall and I want a, a, a so same, I want a variety. I want a variety that is tall and I want it also to be resistant. So I have, I have uh, two varieties with me. A plant that is tall, a plant that is resistant, but I want both the varieties in one plant. So what the best thing I can do is I, I can cross them. 
I can breed them together. And the hybrid that will be produced, I'm expecting that it will be both tall and it will be both resistant, which is not at all necessary. Resistance means resistant towards diseases. Okay, meaning they won't be susceptible to the diseases. Okay, so I am expecting that the hybrid will have both the desired characters, which may or may not happen. Further, when the hybrid will be crossed again, it might not be found again. Agronomic characteristics means, Shashank, the same thing. The characteristics of the plant that you need, for example, a good height, a good foliage. Okay, all of that comes in the agronomic characteristics. So if I, uh, so this is hybridization where you depend on the nature to produce a hybrid where it will be carrying the characters of both the varieties. Another is genetic manipulation or genetic engineering where you bring out the genes that are good. For example, this was done, I think in case of tobacco. Okay, so, or and even cotton. So there were these ball worms You'll study about these in higher grades. Ball worms that used to plague the cotton and um, the cotton industry because they used to bore them down. So we found a gene that was uh, that could uh, destroy the ball worms, and we gave the gene to the plant. Now the plant started producing that protein that could defeat the ball worms, and in this way we improved the crop. So in both the terms, we are improving the crop, but in the genetic manipulation, we are sure of it. We are 100% sure of it. We make the situations 100% chance free. Right. Okay. Now, what is composite culture and what its advantage? As discussed, composite culture is when we use more than one, uh, one type of uh, fish together and uh, uh, allow them to live together in the same environment. Right. Uh, we need agronomic characteristics are characteristics of a plant that are concerned with its productivity for example some plants we want them tall some plants we don't want too many branches okay for example if the rice is too tall it will dwindle because of the air we don't want rice too tall okay so now what are the advantages of composite culture? The advantages are that there won't be any competition and you'll be getting more uh, more output from the area that you're investing in. Okay, now what is the need for accurate administration of pesticides and status implications of, of overuse with examples? Now, administration of pesticides, as I told, pesticides are chemical in nature, right? So because they are chemical in nature, what happens is that if you administer them in uh, huge quantities, two problems can arise. First, it will directly impact the plant. Second, it will change the micro environment of the plant. It might end up killing the bacteria that are living there in the soil, which were benefiting the plant in one way or the other, because we understand that bacteria and other fungi, they are decomposers, right? They, they, de they degrade it and they, they bring it to they bring the uh, substances back to it, right? So that is important from uh, that point of view. Third thing, it can cause environmental problems. Generally, uh, okay, wait. Uh, the Italian bees, Drishti, they generally increase the uh, yield. They have more honey production. That is why they increase the yield of the plants. Okay. So we can have the following side effects of pest, uh, excess uses of pesticides, right? So it can have, so, uh, it can be bad for plant. It can be bad for plant indirectly by changing the micro environments. It can be bad for plant because plant and many other organisms because of the environmental problems that it faces. Okay. So next question, yes, Rajneesh, what vegetarian, don't worry, you don't be bothered about that. Mane, uh, but it's harmful to use pesticides. Pesticides are not harmful if used in a good amount and it administered properly. Pesticides will kill the pests. You don't want your crop to be taken away by the pest, to be destroyed by pest. 
okay you don't want that to happen that is why you use pesticides but if you use too much of it it is gonna harm right that is why we don't use it too much what is metal yellow so metal yellow is a compound it's generally used as a coloring agent right but it's cancerous compost and vermicompost just a moment it's cancerous it's carcinogen we don't we shouldn't use it okay that is why we shouldn't use metal yellow and if there is a problem if there is an adulteration with metal yellow it can be determined by hcl okay the hcl will turn it pink now composting is a process that's generally carried by a uh, bacteria and fungi that live in the soil whereas vermicomposting is done with the help of detritivores that means worms red worms uh or uh, the earthworms, right? They, they do the digestion part uh, inside, and as a result, the excreta of theirs contains the nutrient or uh, nutrition voice rich substrate. Now, okay, so vermi composting composting are identical processes where not identical, similar processes where you break down the uh, organic compounds to release a nutrient to make it more available. Whereas, com when composting only uses bacteria and fungi. Wormy composting uses worms, generally earthworms and redworms. Okay, now what is fumigation? Fumigation is a process where we generally clean the stores or you can even clean your rooms by calling fumigation. You, fumigation, you use mercury uh, compounds. I think mer uh, mercuric chloride is used, HGCl2 is used. It's, uh, it's an agent that will kill off uh, other organisms. Okay, that is why, uh, that is called fumigation. Now, important points to remember when you're answering questions uh, related to this chapter, this chapter is full with examples, not full, but it has examples, examples that you must remember at any cost. Don't forget the names of the bees. Don't forget the names of the Katla, Rohu and Mrigal. Don't forget the names of the one exotic and one local breed. You have to remember the examples. If you don't substantiate your answer with examples, you won't get good marks. Follow mark plus one scheme. It's a one marker question. One point or two point plus examples. We are not affected by pesticides, Mane, if it's in very minute quantity. It depends on what pesticide we are talking about, right? For example, DDT was a pesticide and we, we used it blindly, but we came to know that it, it bioaccumulates. Okay, it bioaccumulates and not only that, it biomagnifies. We don't want that happening. We stopped using DDT, right? So we have to we have to think about uh, the pesticide at, at an ecosystem level. What what will be the out effect? Okay, and okay, coming back. So practice questions from the question mark because see, we discussed several questions, but when you get to more questions, it can help you a lot better. Okay, so that's me with this session. Uh, I hope this session helped you. And if you want more help, you know how to reach us, right? Uh, yes, I did answer. Uh, see, uh, pesticides indeed help us. It depends on what pesticides you, you're using. Okay, okay, guys. So that's me signing off, and I'll see you guys in next class. I think that was that will be our last one. Bye bye, and all the best for exams.